Hello, can everybody hear me? Yes. Hi, Elizabeth. Thanks for being available. My name is Candace Buckner, and I work at the Washington Post. Um, my question is not about on the court, but I'm working on a story that's uh, a little bigger than that. Uh, obviously, the players, you players have been on the front lines of this is issue concerning Senator Kelly Leffler, and you're making the chess move with the vote Warnock shirts. Of course, she countered today with a statement, but you, Elizabeth, as part of the players union leadership and an Atlanta Dream player, was it, what is it that you would like to see moving forward concerning Leffler and the league? In other words, what is the end game here? I mean, <clears throat> I think the end game is still um, seeing effective social justice change. I mean, that's something that as a league, as players, that's something we've focused on since even before we got into the bubble and it was a priority for all of us players. And for us, we felt like something that we've talked about is the importance of voting and that its role in the democratic process. And so um, it just so happened that Reverend Warnock is running in this specific seat and he also supports Black Lives Matter and all that we as players have been fighting for. And so for us, it's just continuing to see um, effective policy change and effective social change. As a follow-up, throughout all of this, has either co-owner Leffler or Mary Brock reached out to Dream Players? Um, not as far as I know on an individual basis. Um, and again, we're just kind of focused on our social justice work. And at the end of the day, we're also still players. And so we're going to we're going to continue to focus on the basketball side and play our game. And we, we can't really control what happens at that level. I think it's my turn. I'm not sure. Hi, I'm Claire Sims with Fox 5 Atlanta. Um, thank you for your time. Um, I'm a political reporter, so I normally wouldn't be talking to you, but obviously you guys have entered the political arena and Senator Leffler has made um, it very clear that she thinks politics do not belong in sports. Why do you disagree? Um, I think something that player leadership has mentioned is that in a league that consists of 80% black women um, in a space in sports that is not, you know, we don't usually get credit in sports as much as men do. Um, we're kind of inherently political in that sense. You know, we're focusing our season on say her name because a lot of Black women, um, their names are lost in the conversation when it comes to police brutality and social justice. Um, uh, I lost my train of thought. What else was I gonna say? Um, Maybe I can spark another uh, thought for you. We've seen this over the last several years with players being um, sort of just, looked down on for having an opinion. Why do you think right, it's important yeah. for people with this platform to make sure that their opinion is heard? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, we're still citizens. We are still um, able to vote. Our voice is just as important as anyone else's. You know, I'm a registered voter in Georgia specifically, um, which isn't the case for all players, obviously, but being in that unique position, um, we still we still have as big as a voice as anyone else, regardless of our job description. One more follow-up. Um, obviously, as soon as the, the pictures got out on social media, there was a lot of quick response and, and lots of people are paying attention. Is that what you guys were looking for? Is that what you were hoping for? I mean, yeah, we were trying to be intentional about um, the statement that we made and we wanted to be strategic again we're not politicians, we're athletes. Um, but I think we kind of felt like we we're in a position where having and having conversations with Stacey Abrams, um, having conversations with Michelle Obama about when we all vote, um, we felt like we could still make a powerful enough statement that supports, um, supports everything that we believe in as players. All right.
Elizabeth Candace here again. Um, as you mentioned, you are our basketball players, and I, I can only imagine because I'm not there, but the bubble is not normal. So when you're trying to do your job and you're living in a, in a, a unique situation, um, how, just how has it been mentally for you to go through not only the bubble to do your job, but also this, this heavy issue that you guys, again, are on the front lines um, fighting? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a very unique situation to say the least. Um, I think all of us are thankful that we do have basketball as kind of our outlet away from everything. Um, I mean, the reality is we're still in a pandemic. We're still dealing with the pandemic of COVID. We're dealing with the social justice movement happening in the world. Um, but it's, it's also nice to feel like we can still play basketball and have that safe space. So it's been, it was important for us in coming to the bubble to make sure that all the social justice work that had been done before entering here was, was not lost. I um, mean, I think we've done a good job of, you know, doing stuff, whether it's via Zoom call and just, you know, communicating, making sure that we're talking about things like voting and justice reform and still able to effectively make changes that way. Thank you very much. Hey, it's Bob. Just uh, first off, can can you just walk us through how this all came about with the shirts? I think it was said that it was Sue's idea in a sense. Did she approach you guys as an executive council thing at the union? How did this all come about that the shirts uh, were worn by you guys and other teams yesterday? Yeah, I always joke with Sue that no matter what, I'm just going to give her all the credit. But um, we definitely, uh, it was something that we talked through. Um, again, we wanted to be strategic. We wanted to be intentional um, about our words and our language. And we wanted to make sure that whatever action was taken, we felt like um, in doing so, all of the, the ideas that we've been focused on weren't lost. Um, and we also wanted to make sure that this was completely player led and it was completely optional. Um, nobody was forced to wear the shirts. Um, nobody, it wasn't like mandatory, but there is also power in, in the unity of it. Um, so yeah, it's something we discussed. We talked to players about it. We talked to, um, we talked to Reverend Warnock. We talked to Stacey Abrams, Lisa Borders, different people that know a little bit more about the political side. Uh, so we weren't completely blindsided and yeah, it just kind of came to be. Cool. And if I can follow up, I think you said you guys are going to wear the shirts again. Is it going to be like randomly? Is it going to be every week, every game? Any, any thought on how long you guys plan to wear the shirts for? Uh, we're still working on the strategy. Um, I believe the team swing today will still wear the shirts. Um, but moving forward, we're still working on how we're going to continue with that. Thanks, E. Elizabeth, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Elizabeth, Danny Thompson, the three-point conversion. How good does it feel to be part of a league that not only allows you to be able to say how you feel, but also have the league support behind you and not be censored to how you say it and how you feel about certain issues? Yeah, it's great. I think um, people are starting to realize that we've been doing this for years now. Um, obviously, 2016 – you wouldn't see too many corporations saying Black Lives Matter. You might see, you know, like Kaepernick and a couple players here and there. But now we're seeing um, some of the activism on a global scale. But um, even years ago when it wasn't as popular, we were fortunate that um, our league understood that our voices needed to be out there and needed to be heard. Um, and it's powerful. I mean, it's inspiring as a player to know that players on other teams feel the same way they're making their impact um, and we can continue to have conversations and have a unified voice.